All right, guys. So today we're gonna be reacting to alcohol culture in Germany versus the U.S. Very interesting. Very interesting. <clears throat> I know there's some states here in the United States where they have huge, huge rules and laws um, when it comes down to alcohol, right? But there's some states that they're very um, loose. If you come to the Midwest, some of these um, um, alcohol laws are very flexible. Can still drink outside you can you know some 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 bars they allow uh kids to be in, inside the bar kind of thing but then you are more into the east side of the united states you find more restrictions when you come down to drinking if you visit new york uh connecticut uh, massachusetts even though those places have a very strong irish culture or an, even polish culture <clears throat> but somehow they are very strict I'm very interesting to see what she has to say and what the difference are. Make sure you like to subscribe and also put it in the link in the comment section below what kind of videos you would like me to react next. And that way it's much easier for me to just see what my audience are looking for. Let's jump in. Hanging out with your friends in the park on a warm summer night, drinking a few beers, listening to music or having a champagne toast at your high school graduation. Normal in one country, taboo in the other one. Is it taboo here? Hello, servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio, oh, hi. off and on since 2016. When you mention Germany to anyone in the world, one of the first cliches that comes to mind is beer. beer. I even have mentioned German beer a few times in my videos. I'm planning on selling my own beer mug. Hey, shout out to her for doing that. Hey, good job. I even created my Patreon tiers based on beer sizes. So I guess I'm totally confirming the stereotype with this. Not every German is like that, of course. A lot of my German friends, especially girlfriends, prefer wine or mixed drinks like Hugo or Aperol Spritz, which, by the way, who is really a Spanish um, US, But either way, name. alcohol is an important part of the German culture, and our alcohol culture is pretty different than what you'll see here in the US in a lot of aspects. How so? That's what I'll tell you in this video. Okay. I'll be talking about the drinking age, the laws, how alcohol is perceived in the two countries, how much alcohol is consumed, the German beer culture, and in the end, I'll share a few fun facts about the actual act of drinking alcohol in the two countries. And a quick disclaimer before I start, I'm not trying to encourage anyone to drink alcohol with this video. It can be addictive, and if you drink, please drink responsibly. So the first thing to mention is the drinking age, of course. For Americans, it's usually shocking to find out about the drinking age in Germany. And for Germans, the American drinking age often seems pretty shocking too. In Germany, you're allowed to legally buy and drink beer and wine, which includes sparkling wine, at the age of 16 and hard liquor at the age of 18, while in the US, the legal drinking age for all alcohol is 21. That's so not true. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. It's all depends state by state. Again, this is not, you know, the state by state. Puerto Rico is, 20, is 18. Uh, Wisconsin is 21. Different state by state, not in the United States. There's something called for those people in Germany to understand the United States, the autonomy of the states, right? We take that very seriously, right? And we fought a civil war because of that, right? Each state has their autonomy to just write their own rules by under the constitution, the federal constitution, right? But they still have some strong autonomies. Puerto Rico's 18th, Wisconsin's is 21. Different states. See, when she say United States, it's like, hold on, that's not, that's the case. Maybe where she will live in Ohio, let's check real quick. Ohio is 21, yeah? Wisconsin 21, Puerto Rico's 18th, right? It all depends. So there we have to be careful, right? Which if she said Ohio is 18, I will say, okay, she's right. But in the United States, not exactly. Obviously, some Americans think that the drinking age is way too low in Germany. And some of us Germans She's saying except Puerto Rico and in our in Virgin Island, Puerto Rico is still a state. It's not part of the union, but it's still a state. Because the federal government gives the right to those states. 
right? So we have to be careful here. And actually, Wisconsin can even change that law if they want to. They want to. They can change it. Um, but it seems, in, in, <clears throat> to be fair with Germans, you guys have a very strong culture. So probably drinking 16, 18 might not be a problem. That 21 is ridiculously high, especially since you can drive, join the military, and even buy a gun way before that. Sometimes That's true. Americans talk about how they visited Germany and saw even kids drink alcohol. That's because at the age of 14, you're allowed to drink beer and wine when you're with your parents or a legal guardian. A lot of the states here actually have exceptions like that too. And for so right here we have Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Virginia, and Washington, and D.C., Washington, D.C. Um, the legal drinking age is 18 for beer and wine and 21 for liquor. Kansas, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, the legal drinking age is 18 for 3.2% um, AB, ABV beer and 21 for, for stronger beers, right? So, again, it's dependent on the states. There's many states that they do have 18 as a... Legal age, right? Again, some of these states are very demographically, they're different. So they have different cultures. So let's take that into consideration. That's why certain, that's why Wisconsin, is, when it comes down to beer and drinking, it's, it's less restricted than New York, right? From my personal experience and my social environment, I'd say that it's pretty normal that parents let their kids try some beer or wine when they're young. And once they're like in their teenager years, it's not uncommon that parents know and allow their kids to drink alcohol even when they're not quite 16 yet. A 16th birthday party in Germany is, in a lot of cases, very different from the typical sweet 16 party in the US. It's usually more like the equivalent to an American's 21st birthday. And because of the low drinking age, people also mm. start going out earlier in Germany. At 16, you can officially drink at all the beer festivals. And my friends and I also went to bars and certain clubs a lot at that age. Whenever the place had a dance floor though, so kind of like a club setting, they would keep your ID at the door if you were under 18 mm. and give you a stamp or wristband or something. And with that, you weren't allowed to buy any hard liquor and you also weren't yes, allowed to stay past midnight like everyone else. Okay, so you there's some restrictions. And pick up your ID at the entrance. And if you tried to stay longer, they would take the leftover IDs and go look for you in the club to kick you out. Fun times. By the way, there is no legal closing time for clubs and bars in Germany. That is they interesting. Use... That is very interesting that they don't have no closing time. Here we have in the United States, we do. We have At least they open for as long as they want. Sometimes there are local laws in cities because of the noise, but overall it's normal to stay out until the morning in Germany. In some extreme cases, like in the party scene in Berlin, people even stay until like 11 a.m. or something the next day. Mm -hmm. But I'd say most people stay at a club until like 5, 6 or yeah. 7 a.m. In the U.S., most states have regulations on when the last call is yep. and how long True. bars can stay open. Here in Ohio, 2 a.m. is the last call. So after that, bars can't sell any alcohol, but some bars are allowed to still serve the purchased alcohol until 2.30 a.m. So that's when everything closes, which in Germany, that's when some people start to go out and not go home. But more on these laws in a second. Another big Man, in, in Texas is crazy, man. <laughs> in Texas is Friday night, 11.15 a.m. Saturday night. Oof. Uh, you, you guys, you guys need to loosen up a little bit in Texas. Thing related to the My drinking God. age are fake IDs. They're pretty common in the US. While they're yeah. not really a thing in Germany, I've personally never seen a German one. But a lot of underage people in the US who want to still buy alcohol or go to the bars get one, usually on the internet. They often look like an ID from another state to make sure that the bouncers in your state aren't too familiar, familiar with them. them. And yeah. also, they're easier to copy from some states. They have the person's actual picture, but a different name and different information on it. Yeah. And even though it's a crime to use those, I personally don't know of anyone who has gotten in legal trouble for it. Oh, yeah, no, no. People get in trouble because of this, man. Oh, yeah. People, because think about it, folks. You only get, you only need one bouncer that he's doing his job. <laughs> only one. If you have a fake ID and you go to 20 different bars, there's a percentage that at least one is going to say like, hold on, stop right here. Let me call someone. At least one. 
It's like driving without a license. You see? It only requires one stop. One stop or one wrong turn to just have your police behind your back. They're just really common, and in most cases, the worst thing to happen <clears throat> is for the bouncer or bartender to realize that your ID is fake and take it from you. That's my experience, at least. Let me know in the comments if it's different where you live or if you know someone who has gotten in legal trouble for it. Some places also knowingly let in minors with a fake ID. In Germany, those oh, IDs really aren't a thing, and I feel like it would be prosecuted more strictly. If anything, people use their friends' or older siblings' IDs, but since our drinking age is lower, teenagers don't really need to do that a lot. Mm. Okay. Right after the drinking age, the second biggest difference is where you're allowed to drink alcohol. In Germany, you're generally allowed to drink alcohol in public, while in the US, that's usually illegal, with a few exceptions like, for example, New Orleans, Indianapolis, or Las Vegas, and sometimes there are exceptions for events and things like that. What do you mean, like, uh, I'm, I'm confused, like, you can't drink outside? Indianapolis or Las Vegas, and sometimes there are exceptions for events and things like that. But this law is why in movies and in real life too, you'll sometimes see people drink out of those brown paper bags in public. They're trying to hide their alcohol, which doesn't make it legal, but you still see people do that. In Germany, however, you are allowed to drink openly when you're out in public, and we do that quite a lot too, especially in the summer. A lot of Germans just hang out outside somewhere, like in the park or on a nice square in the city. I mean, you can't do that here. I can go to a park, have a nice beer. I don't know, problem. The thing is, um, of course, you cannot go to the city, I guess. That, that's, that's true. You cannot go to the city and drink a beer. Again, yeah, that, I, I think that's a little bit here. We need to fix that. Uh, be a little bit looser in the, lake, in the alcohol. Sometimes while grilling out and we drink. But the water is always yeah. nice because you can put your drinks in the shallow water ha. for them to stay cool. Another thing <laughs> that is really common is drinking while you're walking somewhere. Yeah. This has different names, but I usually call it a Wegbier, a Weg way beer. beer. And that's just so nice sometimes, whether it's walking through the park or the city with your that's friends nice. on a warm summer night with a beer in your hand. And a lot of people also do it for pre-gaming. So before going out, people often pre-game in both countries. But in Germany, you can pre-game and then take your drinks with you oh, okay. and finish them on the way to the I location. I was gonna say, I yeah. actually sometimes did that here in the US in the beginning, no, just out of you. habit. And then like halfway there, I was like, uh oh, I just carried my open beer with me on the street. One thing that isn't always allowed though is drinking on public transportation. No, that's not allowed here. Some people do it, but it's not allowed. That's different from city to city, but some don't allow it, which doesn't mean that people don't still do it anyway. Another advantage of the whole drinking in public thing is that it's less complicated for restaurants to have an outdoor area in the summer. Hmm. In a lot of European cities, sidewalk dining and sidewalk cafes are very common and they're an important... I think this is this video might be um, a couple of years old, right? Because... Um, a dining outside is very common here in the United States. I, I mean, it, I live in a couple of different states and, and it's very common. It's very common to dine out outside. We prefer it. Me and my family, we prefer to dine out. Especially with that, when you have that nice, warm, 70 degree weather outside. Oh my goodness. You, you don't want to miss that out. Important part of the and city. you can still drink in that area. Gabe but I think this is a new thing after the, the COVID-19. Well, I cannot say that. I cannot say that after the thing. In the US, however, restaurants have to make sure that if they have an outdoor area, it's compliant with the alcohol. That laws. makes sense. And in Ohio, for example, restaurants need to have a physical border around their outdoor area in order to be able to serve alcohol there. Let yeah. me know if that's different in your state, but in Ohio, the restaurants and bars Ohio's have a beautiful state, though. their outdoor areas. Or, of course, they can have like a rooftop or a courtyard. Yep. Then there are also laws that regulate when and where alcohol can be sold in the U.S. in stores. And there are actually some regions in the U.S. where you can't get any alcohol at all. Wow, so really? So-called dry counties. Here on the map, they're marked in red. But even outside of those, in a lot of states, oh. you can't get any alcohol at a normal grocery store. 
either the store will have a separated liquor section attached mm -hmm, to it true. or you need to go to a liquor store in some states you can at least get beer and wine at the grocery store though true. then there are also time limits in ohio for example you can't buy any alcohol at the store between 1 a.m and 5 30 a.m interesting and i didn't know that from 2 30 to 6 a.m and in a lot of states, you can't buy alcohol at all at the store on Sundays. I never heard that before. I never heard that before, that you cannot buy alcohol on Sundays. I never heard that before. Huh. In Germany, you can buy alcohol basically anywhere and anytime, as long as the stores are open, because that's really the bigger question in Germany, because normal stores usually close between 8 p.m. and 11 p.m., depending on where you are in Germany and you can get all kinds of alcohol at any store supermarkets yeah, you guys have a lot stores, of beer yeah gas stations or even kiosks when it comes to driving laws in regards to alcohol i've mentioned this in my video on driving differences if you haven't seen that yet the limit for blood alcohol while driving is higher in the u.s actually we measure it differently it's percent in the u.s and per mil in germany but in per mil the limit is 0 0.8 in the u.s and 0 0.5 in germany okay. of course this is stricter so. when you're still in a probation period or something like that yeah. and obviously you should never drink when you intend to drive yeah i agree with you. don't drink when you drive man don't do that my father used to do that bro but i don't even know how he's still alive but don't do that, folks. Don't, don't do that. But in the US, they even take it one step further. Even when you're completely sober, you're not allowed to have an opened alcohol container True. in your car in most True. states. So you can't have a whiskey bottle in your car that has been opened before. Or if your passenger driver wants to bring the rest of an already opened bottle of wine with them, it's illegal to have that in the car unless yeah, it's in the trunk. That's in true. a few states, though, it is allowed for the passengers to have open alcohol. I would like containers. to know what kind of states. In Germany, there's no that. problem with that at all. Your passengers are even allowed to drink while they're in your car and technically even you as a driver are legally allowed no don't even if it's illegal it's not a good idea don't to nope. drink while driving it's not even good to know as long as you Ooh. stay under the 0 0.5 per mil limit which is obviously really irresponsible and nobody should ever do that yeah, yeah. but it's crazy to mention because it seems like really loose rules compared to the ones in the u.s number wise yeah. however despite the loose rules in germany there are more duis in the u.s than in germany so more drunk driving violence i i, I agree with that <laughs> DUIs are very big in the United States. Very big. We have cheap beer, man. Cheap beer. Now let's talk about how alcohol is looked at in the two countries, which is tricky because culture is always something that's hard to grasp and that's going to vary from place to place and from person to person. But broadly speaking, I'd say that in the US, alcohol is more perceived as a taboo topic with people really? under 21 not even being able to enter a bar and all those legal restrictions. Okay. In Germany, I would say that it's more considered a normal part of everyday life and part of our culture. Makes like sense. A lot of European we even call beer a staple food sometimes okay. but it's like italians and spaniards they had their wine i don't know after eating a, a meal right and they there's some people here in the united states they do it you know well, it's not it's not big i just we see things differently i guess Trees. And good beer, good wine, and other alcohol is something that we drink because we enjoy it in a lot of cases. Yeah. So having a glass of wine or beer with your dinner is pretty normal for yep. some people even during the week, for others only for special dinners. Another pretty Here in the United States, if when you go to a bar, get some natural, a nice burger with french fries, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Then you want to get a nice beer on the double lot, and then you make sure when you're eating that fried burger, you feel that beer is coming. You see what I'm saying? Uh, that's the feeling, right? <laughs> common thing is having a Feierabend beer, which is the beer that you drink after work. So it's what you've earned after working hard. That Even is very common with... here, man. That is very common here. Long day of work. A lot of people, what they think, let me get a beer after work. Very common. Your lunch isn't really a taboo in Germany. The Bavarian traditional dish Weißwurstfrühstück, white sausage breakfast, oh, that's nice. is traditionally eaten really? before noon huh. and it comes with a glass of Hefeweizen. Also, <laughs> at a lot of places I've worked at before, which was mostly in the media field, so it may not be like that in all fields, 
they had some beer right next to the soda in the storage. Or at one right. place, we even had beer in the vending machine. Huh. And when there was something to celebrate, we also often had champagne during the day and then kept working. That being said, though, drinking during the day is definitely not a daily thing for most Germans. And there's also a saying, kein Bier vor vier, no beer before four. Because I feel like it almost sounds like we're all alcoholics in Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't want that. Definitely not. Obviously, people in the US do enjoy their drinks as well. But just in comparison, there is a tendency towards a more excessive consumption than in Germany. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't drink because they like the beer or wine. They drink in order to get drunk. drunk. Yep. People do that in Germany too, of course. But the binge drinking culture really isn't as big there as it is here in the US. I mean, the party culture in the here in the this state is crazy so uk for example maybe that's one reason why hard seltzers like white claw have become really popular in the us while they're not a thing in germany because a lot of people in the states like the feeling of being tipsy but don't want to taste the alcohol necessarily i like the just water, a thought the though white i claw. didn't conduct any studies on this but overall i would say that in germany alcohol is more something that you actually enjoy and a cultural artifact while in the us it's often more considered something forbidden like a drug which okay. it is, of course, but that's just not as prevalent in our perception of alcohol in Germany. Makes sense. Fact is, Germany definitely has a much higher alcohol consumption than the US, with the average German drinking about 10.6 liters of pure alcohol per year, while it's Damn. 9 liters per person in the US. Almost the same. And when it comes to beer in particular, Germans consumed a total of 8,321 million liters in total in 2018. Per capita, only the Czechs and the Austrians drink more beer than us. We drink over yeah. 100 liters of beer. So you guys per drink more beer than the Irish? Man, that's, that's a tough one. Person per year. That's and a with tough that, one. let's go into the beer culture. Beer culture. Cheese beer. That's a Obviously, good one. Obviously, beer isn't the only alcohol that we produce in Germany, but it's definitely the most popular drink, and every region is known for their own kinds. Like, Bavarians like to drink Lager and Hefeweizen. In most parts of Germany, people drink Pilsners, and in the Cologne area, they drink Kölsch, named after the city and served in tiny 0.2 liter glasses huh. in a so called. Interesting. Reef. And of course, there are a lot of festivals all over Germany where people mainly drink beer with Oktoberfest in Munich, Die Wiesen, how us locals call it, being the biggest and most popular one within Germany. But they're celebrated all throughout the summer in different places, a lot in the south of Germany, but also in the north, even though they don't have that beer tent culture just as much. And we also have wine festivals, by the way. Oh, that's Another nice. thing related to beer are our beer gardens, which again, <clears throat> we have more of those in the south, but you'll absolutely find them in the north of Germany too. Sometimes beer gardens are just the outdoor area of a restaurant, but the classical beer garden is just a big outdoor area with gravel. And oh man, I love those. Benches and I self love those, man. I love those. I'm not a real a beer drinker guy, right? But when it comes down to things like this, when you go to a family, you wanna, you know, as an American, you wanna. This is me as an American speaking from an American experience, right? You wanna buy a nice, broad, big, broad with cheese on top of it. You see what I'm saying? Like nachos on top of it, a little bit of burger. Then you're with your family, you're having a good time. You know what I'm saying? In the outdoors, and then you you can feel the breeze. Just, oh man, I love it. Of service for drinks, which they always have the beer on tap. And if you want a radla, which is half beer, half lemon soda, they'll mix it right in front of it's you. Like a you can also get non-alcoholic drinks, of course. And in a lot of cases, they also have a food self-service, but you're also usually allowed to bring your own food there. So in the summer, a lot of people celebrate birthdays there and bring their own cakes and everything. Oh, that's nice. Or people just get together for a potluck or a picnic and all they get at the location is the drinks. Okay. Definitely something that I miss in the States in the summer. And yes, there are German style beer gardens in the US, but I personally haven't been to one that's actually like that with that atmosphere. Really? You're not coming to come to Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Iowa, uh, all this region, they do that a lot. They, I used to go a lot uh, in Wisconsin and Milwaukee. We used to uh, call close to the art museum during the summer. <laughs> There's a little truck. They sell, you know, food and stuff and beer. You can't drink it outside. 
and they have bands, uh, like uh, instrument band, bands with instrument, real instrument. I'm not talking about, you know, backtracks and all that stuff. Like, you know, it's very beautiful, great experience. So maybe, maybe because of that, I don't know. You probably, if you go to Wisconsin, you're going to see a lot of that. Related to this, one thing that is much stronger and different in the US is the bar culture. Germany doesn't have that much of a bar culture like you can find it here in yeah, the US. Yeah, I, I, I know they that, in Europe, UK, right? But in Germany, we have more places that are just restaurants, restaurants where yeah. you also drink or bars with table service, but less of those bars where you go in, play pool or darts, no, no. get your drink That's such an American thing, and man. have a jukebox and stuff like that. When it comes to restaurants, <laughs> you'll notice that in Germany, a lot of the restaurants only serve one brand of lager, one brand of Pilsner, etc. because they have a sponsorship agreement oh, okay. with a brewery for financial support. So often they also have the logo of the brewery on oh, their side. Oh, I see. And my last point about beer that is pretty special in Germany is that we have the so-called Reinheitsgebot, the purity law regarding beer brewing in Germany. Important. This has been around since the year 1516, <laughs> so over 500 years. And basically what it means is that there are regulations in place that say that you're only allowed to include malted grains, hops, water and yeast when making a beer which is one of the reasons that the craft beer scene hasn't taken off in germany yeah. as it has in the us and other countries here again uh, here we have more flexibility to try stuff you know what i'm saying like oh but this is the way the germans are doing stuff hmm let me do something different let me just add something different let me add this kind of grain you know what i'm saying like we have that flexibility here but you guys are very well known for your craft beer, though, you know, like because those breweries struggle with the regulations and the permission to sell their beer under the name beer. But this oh. mostly applies to bottom fermented beers on the German market. Breweries are allowed to make different kind of beers for export purposes and breweries from abroad are allowed to import their beers, even if they don't comply with the purity law. That made no sense. Made no and finally, sense. here are 15 fun facts and differences regarding the actual act of drinking in Germany and the US. The first one is that German beer has more alcohol than American beer most of the time. Bud Light, which is a popular beer in the US, Whoa. Germans often call it water, I Whoa. hear, only it's has 4.2% yeah. of alcohol, while in Germany, beer usually has 5% or more. And especially when you go to Oktoberfest, please notice that the festival beer usually has around 6%. Mm. Number two, in Germany, we usually drink beer out of bottles and not so much out of cans. We do have canned beer, but most people only drink that when they're at a music festival or something like that, where bottles aren't allowed. But canned beer isn't nearly as popular as it is in the US. Here, okay. I would say that it's almost like 50 50, 50, 50 yeah. 50%. They say that beer. canned beer tastes different than the bottle of beer, beer in the bottle. And it's true, it's true. 50% cans. True. Since Americans drink out of cans a lot, they use these things a lot too. <laughs> I had never seen this before I came to the US and I still don't it's, use them. Yeah, you want to grab it. Koozies and it's sometimes kind of cold. Hold your can because they're usually so cold that it hurts yeah. your hand. So you just go like this and <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah, you Number have Number four is that besides the regular 0.3 liter bottles, mm. 10 ounce, you can also get a lot of the beers, especially in the south, in half liter bottles, 16 ounce. And when you order beer somewhere, you can also get it in a mass, which is what we call a liter of beer yeah. in Bavaria, so 34 ounces. The general name for those things, no matter which size, is Bierkrug and not Stein like you guys call it in English. Stein actually means rock or stone in German. <laughs> While a six pack of bottles or cans is a very popular size to buy beer here, in Germany you can get beer just like pretty much all beverages in cases that hold 20 half liter bottles. We call them Kasten. In the US, you can get packs of 24 beers as well, but usually you just get it in a car. <laughs> Number six, yeah, as true. I've mentioned in other videos before, we have a deposit system in place in Germany, where for beer bottles, you get eight cents back per bottle when you return them, and you also oh. get a deposit on your case if you bought one. 
Number seven, beer is actually not cheaper than non-alcoholic drinks in German restaurants. I found that that's a common cliche, and I believe that it was like that at some point, but this Inflation has become probably illegal, took over. and now there always has to be at least one non-alcoholic drink on the menu that's cheaper than the alcoholic Really? Huh? Number eight is something that all of my German viewers That is so interesting, folks, huh? At least one non-alcoholic drink cheaper than the alcohol itself. Interesting. We find super fake, and it's that some beer brands here use twist off bottles so that you don't need a bottle opener. That doesn't really exist in Germany, but Germans don't usually need a bottle opener either. Most Germans are really talented at opening their beer bottles with lighters, another bottle, <laughs> a rolled up newspaper, or the edge of a well, table. Well, here in the state, not all of them open like that. Yeah, I wish. Oh well, no, you sometimes you have to really put your teeth on it. Really go it, go in it like, or you, you know, pop, or you have a, a, you know, bottle opener. But I honestly find this whole twist of thing pretty handy. But maybe that's also because I'm one of the very few Germans that can't do all those tricks. Yeah, I've no been me neither. I've taught how cannot... to do it a million times. I've tried a million times. It's just not something that I'm good at. So I usually just carry a bottle opener with my keychain. Hey, hey, there Number you go. nine. Germans have adapted a lot of the typical American drinking games like beer pong, flip cup and those kind of things. But one game that seems to be a German invention that Americans usually don't know about is flunky ball, also called beer ball sometimes. I've taught that to a few American friends and they all loved it. Number 10 is that a lot of Germans know how to properly pour different kinds of beers and it's a little looked down upon when you don't know how to do that and do it wrong or pour it in the wrong glass, okay. especially with wheat beer. Don't ever drink wheat beer out of the bottle in Bavaria. You're going to break all the beer lovers hearts. It's supposed to be drunk in a glass like this. Also, huh, in Germany, really? we pour our beer so that it has at least one inch of foam on purpose while in the u.s that's often considered like a waste of space yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 you have to till the the glass a little bit that way you can get all the alcohol oh yes yeah, true man you come often on get your beer poured on, out be until the top of the glass with zero foam this one i've mentioned in my video on german cliches Germans drink their beer usually at a temperature of 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, which is 41 to 50 Fahrenheit. Okay. While in the US, it's common to drink it ice cold. Oh, yeah. Which a lot of Germans say that this is because American beer isn't as good and the cooler it is, the less flavored. Oh, I think, it's, I think what I'm thinking is when I'm in the summer, I want to, the beer so cold. that I, Exactly. I don't want to taste a bit the, the flavor of the beer, right? But I want to just... You know what I'm saying? Like, just go to my throat, man. Like, yeah, just, just, your name says Kurslai. Kurslai. You know, I, and then you have in the, in the, in the, in the little brand, you have like the mountains and, and, and the snow. I want to feel that. But as a result, some Americans seem to think that we drink our beer warm because we don't drink it I ice think 50, 50 to 41 Fahrenheit. I think that's, that's enough though. I, I think that's even... That's almost frozen, right? I think that's fine. I think you're German. You guys got it correct. And I can tell you, we usually do put it in the fridge. Our fridges yeah. just aren't as cold as American. Ones. I mean, 41 to 50 degree Fahrenheit. I think that's the fridge is that's what you want, right? You put it in the freezer, it gets frozen. Number 13 is a minor difference that I've noticed when drinking tequila shots. In Germany, I'm familiar with the tradition of drinking it with salt and a lemon, while in the US, it's usually a lime. Cap. Cap, the times that I, I don't know, I don't want to say cap, but probably her experience. I drink my, te I, I don't drink your tequila, but when I do it, it's always with salt and lemon. It's salt and lemon. Since I, since I turned 18, the times I drink my tequila, which I hate, salt and lemon. Salt here, right? And the lemon. So, chop. Um. Also, when you drink with other people, it's very common in Germany to wait until everyone has their drink and then say cheers and then start drinking. It, it's not like this here. I might be, bro, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know where she's hanging out, but this is very normal. Normal. Hey, everybody wait. Hey, all right. Cheers. And then you say something for cheer, right? Am I, am I, am I, am I just... 
she probably where she's surrounded is not very common. Which the most common way to say that is Prost in German. I'll put a few other options of saying cheers over here. But a lot of Americans <laughs> just seem to start drinking right. Really? What kind of friends do you have? My family, my friends, we all call it beers and we say cheers. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. If it is canned beer where people open it, they just... Yeah, I, I think she's right. She's right. But when it's like the beer, we're in the bar for the first time we get beer. We all, most of the time, we cheer for something. Or oh, toast. Toast, right? Hey, let's toast for the little and then we go for it. it Maybe this is circumstances, right? Yeah, when she might be right. Drink. And the last little fun fact is that, at least in Bavaria, and I'm pretty sure this is a thing in other parts of Germany too, is that you're not supposed to drink the last few zips of your drink, especially with beer. That's considered the Spuckschluck, backwash, or in Bavarian dialect, the Noagal. So in a restaurant or at a beer festival, you'll see that a lot of the empty glasses will have some beer left in there. Uh, While here in the US, I don't really see people do nah, that. Nah, you don't see lot. that. Nah, you don't see that, yes. Everybody drinking their beer, man. Everybody drinking their beer. So that was my little insight into the German alcohol culture compared to the US. Obviously, there is a lot more to touch upon. I really talked mostly about beer because that's like the obvious topic to talk about regarding Germany yeah. and also There's a lot like of difference, beer. yeah. But Germany also makes amazing wine and herbal liquor like Jägermeister, which is sold all over the world. And everything you buy that ends in the word schnapps, like peppermint schnapps, that's German too. Schnapps just means hard liquor in German. Okay. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and are getting through this time somehow. I'm sure a lot of you are actually enjoying a drink or two every now and then. Hey, shout out to her, man. She did a very good video. Very good video. Very good difference between both countries. And she's, she lives in Ohio and there's a lot of Germans there. So I was kind of surprised that there was no similarities. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, we have a lot of differences. Of course, the laws here are very kind of tough when it comes down to alcohol. I remember in Puerto Rico, we have a problem when it comes down to alcohol because I mean, a lot of young people couldn't handle the responsibility of it. And they will go to these festivals, right? And they will start drinking cheap beer and they will start acting foolish. Again, it comes down to culture, right? It seems like you guys have a very strong culture in their own culture, which make it easier to be strong in accountability, right? You you know, accountability is very big in your culture. So I think maybe in the next couple hundreds of years, we might develop a very, a more loosened culture to, to drinking. And yeah, not, not all states are the same. Yeah, when she's mentioned you, the United States, 21, no, it's not It's not like that. There's some states that they are 18th, and I mentioned some of those states. Um, not 16, right, because I think for the United States, it will be a little bit way too early, right, way too early. Again, give us a couple, another 100, 200 years that we figure out, right? But beautiful video. I loved it. I enjoyed it. She touched on a couple of things. She was right. Uh, sometimes I, I, I would love to do that, just drink outside and then go to the ball game. We went drink. I would love to do that, but you know, some some companies here there. No, oh, whatever. They're kind of about profits. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think uh, you guys have the same experience? If you guys Germans are living here in the state, let me know which state you're living. And if some Americans are watching my video, hey man, tell me which which state are you from, and tell me more about your laws in your state. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.